Yeah, I'm Marilee Carr. I'm the chairperson of the Short-Term Accommodation Association, which is the industry body for the UK. Um, and also, we, we have a program called Trusted Stays, which is an industry platform to help companies commercialize and sell into corporates and government. Um, and that also is in partnership with Quality and Tourism, our accreditation partner. So it's all about how to bring all the professional operators in our sector new opportunities for uh, commercial growth. Yeah, so, I mean, NHS Homes kind of came very quickly, you know, as, as we all remember, many of us having been at the short stay show uh, just before lockdown hit, um, you know, I think all of us were optimists and we thought, A, the lockdown's going to be very short um, and B, you know, it, it's not going to hit too hard. Um, but, of course, once it hit and the entire country was shut down almost overnight, not just my company under the doormat, but many companies in the sector had a lot of supply, a lot of homes that were actually sitting empty. Um, I actually had a call from Dayan, the CEO of Laundry Heap, who, who said to me, you know, look, actually, I'm hearing of these stories of NHS workers that are getting kicked out by their flatmates or worried about going and, and, and giving coronavirus to their, to their loved ones. Um, and he's like, you know, I know you guys have some homes that are now empty. Is there something that we could do? And I said, well, look, if you can provide the linens, we can provide the service. And then it's just really reaching out to our owners to say, would you be willing to contribute? And so we did that. Um, and within 24 hours, we had a handful of homes um, and we started posting it on social media. But then I just thought, well, why should we stop there? Actually, with my industry role, there was a big opportunity for this to be an industry-wide initiative. And so together with the other members of STA, we all came together to create NHS Homes. And it was amazing. I mean, literally within a matter of weeks, uh, we had developers that were pulling together, you know, a kind of hacked together site, um, getting thousands of requests in from NHS workers across the entire UK. Um, and at the same time, having property owners reaching out um, and everyone from Sykes Cottages, One Fine Stay, Altido, Vive, uh, Air Peace, I mean, the list goes on. There were so many different companies who got involved. And it was just incredible to see the passion and energy that at a time when the industry was on its knees, actually, we were all thinking about what we could do to help. Um, and so fast forward, of course, in the conversations that I was having with government, I also said, well, now let's hold on a second here. You know, you're paying for NHS workers to stay in the Holiday Inn and hotels. Why would you not be willing to also pay for them to stay in our sector? Um, and they said two things. One is that they were unclear what the standards were in our sector, and they had this perception that our sector was only peer-to-peer. -peer. Now, of course, peer-to-peer -peer is a big, important part of our sector, but it isn't the only part of our sector. There's a huge professional contingent within our sector that does meet accreditation standards. And of course, given the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government had signed off our accreditation scheme with Quality and Tourism two years earlier, we kindly reminded them that they'd already done that and we did have clear standards. And they said, OK, well, that problem is solved. But remember, there were two things that we said. And the second was that they would only do it if we could bring everyone together under one umbrella. They're, they just said, your sector is too disaggregated. We can't go contracting with lots of different companies. So if you can bring everyone together, then we'll consider buying from you. So of course, we went away and did it. Having just done NHS homes where people were doing it out of the goodness of their heart, it was a pretty easy sell to go back to all those companies and say, would you actually like some paid stays, guys? Um, and there were also other companies, of course, that weren't able to participate because they, you know, they, they simply couldn't do it in, in a charitable way, um, who were also interested. So by the end of summer, we actually had 100 companies across the UK that all wanted to be a part of what now became Trusted Stays. Um, fast forward this February, we won the first ever government RFP for our sector. And just last month, as part of a large relocation program, we took our first government bookings into our sector through Trusted Stays. So really exciting. And next week, we're going to be launching the new site. 
Um, and along with that, we've partnered with the Short Stay Summit to actually be the provider for accommodation for everyone traveling to London to be a part of the industry conference. Um, so very exciting. And I think, you know, we now have plans to build into the GDS, uh, the global distribution system, which also is access into corporate bookings that our sector's never been able to access previously. Um, and even the big players who are connected to hotels don't have a GDS connection for their homes, parts of their business. So this is an opportunity for everyone in our sector who's a professional operator to access new channels to market. And I think it's exciting that we've come together and done that as an industry. And I also don't think that that would have happened without COVID. So it's really nice to be able to look back at COVID and say, we've really won some things that, that didn't exist in the past as a result of the crisis. Um, and I, I mean, I'm just so impressed with how the industry came together to do something charitable, but even more excited that doing something good has led to new opportunities for commercial businesses to help our sector grow. I mean, look, I think it is the first time that there's been this type of collaboration across the sector. And, you know, it was very unique also that that was happening in the UK. Um, you know, we talked to people in the European associations or in North America, and people were very much in crisis mode. Um, and I think the fact that we did come together and all the major players in the industry were a part of it, um, you know, there's almost a, a, a kind of fear of missing out um, from players that weren't a part of it. Um, but it also, I think, goes to show the value that that delivers because not only did it change the perception of government of, of, of how diverse the industry is, but also where the industry is, has reached from a professionalism standpoint. Um, what it also did was mean that government now sees us as an option you know, when they had this mass relocation, they called us first because they needed to access homes, not hotel rooms. Um, and I think we're gonna see more and more of that, not just from governments, but also from corporates who, you know, business travel is changing. You know, you're seeing that when people travel, they travel for longer, but they need different types of accommodation. And corporates are now looking for ways to access our sector. And so what we have to do is, build into their systems, which is why the build into the GDS is so important for trusted stays, so that we're there in their structures, their systems, their booking processes, and people can choose a short-term rental. And I think that's really important. And I don't think we would have achieved that if it wasn't for the collaboration we've had so far, but it doesn't stop here. The collaboration continues because the more that we come together as an industry, the more that we can break down barriers and grow the industry. And I believe when we do that, that every single player within the industry will succeed as a result of that. So rather than competing against each other, actually let's work together because if we grow the size of the pie, the slices we each get are gonna be much bigger than if we just focus on competing with each other. Yeah, well, look, I mean, obviously in the past in London, we had had the, sh the short stay show, which was in, in collaboration with our, our commercial partners. Um, and when the last one happened and, you know, the, the, the kind of landscape changed, it was clear that wasn't going to move forward in, it, in, its, in its current form. Um, and at the same time, VRMA actually reached out and said, you know, look, we're thinking about what we're going to do for our next European conference. What are you guys thinking? Um, and we pulled in Carlos from the EHHA and we said, well, look, actually, why should we have different European conferences? Why don't we all pull our resources? It's better for the associations, but it's also better for everyone in the sector that there's a single conference in Europe that everybody must be at every year. Um, the sponsors backed it you know, getting uh, Home Away, Verbo, um, and getting Expedia, as well as Booking.com, Marriott Homes and Villas, Sykes Cottages, Aways, all of these guys said, oh, this makes our life so much easier. We've got a big conference that we can really focus our attention and, and our money on. Um, and so I think that's also then great for all the smaller companies and the rest of the ecosystem. 
because it means they know you can come to this one conference and you're going to be able to see everyone there, all the tech providers, all the suppliers, all the platforms, um, and just get done what might take three or four conferences in one focused day or two. Um, and I think what's also really exciting about it was when we came together as the three associations, we were very clear that if we're going to do this, it's a long-term decision. It's not just a COVID decision. Um, and so we're already planning and, you know, come on the, on the 14th of September because we'll be announcing next year's conference as well. Um, and of course, I can never forget to mention the fact that Marriott is going to be sponsoring the rooftop drinks. Um, and so make sure you get your ticket for the rooftop drinks uh, on the 14th of September, because after 18 months of not all seeing each other, I think it's going to be a big evening and the perfect chance for us all to come back together. I mean, look, to be honest, it's just going to be seeing colleagues from across the industry um, and bringing new ideas together, you know, all the businesses in our sector have been innovating, working really hard over these past 18 months to make sure they're gonna come out of the crisis stronger. And so that's what this event is about. It's about sharing those innovations. It's about learning what's out in the market. And it's about helping all of our businesses grow over the next 12 to 18 months. And I think the possibilities are absolutely there. You know, the, the partnership that we do with STR on the data side, looking at how our industry is recovering quicker than some of our competitors like the hotel industry um, and what consumer trends are telling us, we absolutely have an opportunity to capitalize on over these next couple of years. And this conference is about how we can all come together, learn from each other, grow together and make sure that we absolutely take advantage of that opportunity so that when we get to 2023, 2024, we're all looking back and saying COVID was the best thing that ever happened to our sector because it was an instigator for growth. Um, and I think this conference is our first chance to actually come together in person to have those conversations and make sure that we're all having the right plans that are gonna help us achieve that.